So now that I've figured out what the IP address of my target is, the next step is to figure out what services are running or what ports are open on my target machine. And we've seen one of our favorite tools before that we can use to do that, which is Nmap. And I'm going to be introducing you now to a couple new options in Nmap. The first one is the minus V. Minus V is for verbose, which means give me more detailed output. Show me what's going on in the background. Don't leave me in the dark. If you run Nmap without the verbose option, you'll find yourself staring at a blank screen quite often. If you're like me, you just want to know what's going on every second of this scan, then you want to use the minus V option. Or you can use the minus VV or minus three Vs. The more Vs you use, the more verbose it will be. So I'm going to do minus V. The second option is minus P minus. And this is the same as saying minus P zero to 65535, which tells Nmap that I would like you to scan every single TCP port possible. And then minus capital A. So Nmap has additional options more than or in addition to port scanning, it does other inspections or scans, such as what operating system is being used, what version of the operating system, what's the patch level of the operating system, the service that is detected, what kind of service is it? What version is it? Is it vulnerable to any known attacks and so on? So it does a lot more probing than just port scanning. And if we want to combine all these probings together, we use the minus A option. Now keep in mind that the minus A option will take a lot more time than just a regular port scan. And because now we're trying to hack this machine, we want to know as much information as we possibly can about it. So I am going to be using the minus A option. Next, I will specify the IP address of my target. And last but not least, I want to specify the output. I do not want Nmap to just display the output on the screen. I want it to be saved to a file. And as we have discussed before, Nmap has three different types of output. There's the regular Nmap output, which is very similar to a text file. And it is just a copy of the output of the screen. There is the GNMap file output which is the grappable Nmap. We talked about this in previous videos. And lastly, there's the XML output, and that is used to be fed into other tools, which is something we talk about in other courses. For now, what I wanna do is I wanna save the three formats of this output, the Nmap, GNMap, and the XML file. And to do that, I do minus O for output and minus capital A for all, which means save the output in all the different file formats. And I name the output file. In this case, I'm calling it Metasploitable2. And I hit enter. You notice that Nmap immediately starts to discover open ports. But because I am going to be scanning every single TCP port, plus doing the version scanning and the vulnerability scans and so on, which I'm doing using the minus A option, this is going to be taking a significant amount of time. You can see here on the screen, Nmap telling me there's 5 minutes remaining and then that jumped to 9 and 14 and now I'm stopping at 37 minutes remaining. That's 37 minutes to scan one IP address. That's a lot of time. Imagine if you're doing that against 20 or 50 or 100 IP addresses in a penetration testing or ethical hacking project. So I stop the scan here using the keyboard shortcut Control C, which we talked about in previous videos as well. And I'm going to introduce you to another option in Nmap, which is the timing option. And this is the minus capital T followed by a number. The number can be anything from one to five, one being the slowest, and this is used to avoid intrusion detection systems, for example, but that can be very, very slow. And minus five is the insane scan, which is insanely fast. The problem with insanely fast though is that it's not extremely reliable, obviously, because Nmap just blasts out packets, the scanning packets, and waits for a very limited amount of time for the response. So we can only use that if we know for sure that the network that we're using is extremely reliable. Because I am using a virtualized environment and both machines are in my computer, I know that the network is very reliable, so I'm going to go with the minus T5 option. The scan will start running, and you can immediately see here a warning that says Nmap is giving up on scanning one port because there's a retransmission cap hit. So, so this is one of the reliability issues that I talked about. However, on the positive side, you can see that the scan is 
considerably faster. It's gonna take another one minute or half a minute to finish. And now the scan is done. You can see that Nmap scanned 65536 ports in total. And the next step now Nmap is doing is a service scan. So it's going to be scanning every single service that it found running on the open ports. This is part of the minus capital A option. Now that the scan is complete, I can scroll up and down to have a very quick look. But obviously that's not a very convenient way to look at it. I'll do a quick ls and you can see that the files were stored where I'm working in the current directory. So I want to tidy things up a little bit. Let me create a directory called target. And then I want to move all the nmap scan files into the target directory. And we learned how to do that using the mv command and the name of the file with a wildcard. If you're unfamiliar with what that means, go back to the wildcard videos. Now, if I do a listing of the target directory, I can see that the nmap output files have been successfully moved there. Now to view the content of the output file, I have one option which we've seen, which is the cat command, but that outputs the entire file on my screen, which is not very convenient. It's a big file with a lot of output, and I want to be able to go through it bit by bit. And to do that, I'm going to be using another command that we talked about, which is the less command. And now I can use my keyboard to navigate slowly through this file and go through it bit by bit. So this covers the port scanning bit. As you can see, there's a lot of ports open on the target machine. There's a lot of services running on the target machine. And now we get to the exciting part of trying to hack these services and get our way in and hopefully get root access.